By popular request, I'm now going to show you how to make a simple LAN chat program. It's not as hard as it sounds, it's actually quite easy. And Chris McCogan has a picture of me there in a nice milk carton. That is Jack Austin, that is not me. Anyway, we're going to go into Visual Basic. I'm using Visual Basic 6.0 here. I'm going to go in for a brand new standard executable. This uh, chat program is very really simple. It uses something called a Winsock control, which I think is different on Windows Vista, so anyone who's planning on using on that, it might, you might have to uh, try something else out. I, I don't know, I've never tried to adapt to it, but anyway, we're going to find that Winsock control, which you have to add in. So if you, I've got um, pictures that are going to come up on screen. So there you go, we're going to Project Components, because I know you can't really see the writing on the screen, and there's nothing I can really do about it. So um, and then you just go into Project Components, and we scroll down until we find the Microsoft WinSock Control. And then a little picture will come up for you. That's Microsoft WinSock Control 6.0. And we check that box, and then we click OK. And here in the bottom left, a little icon will appear. You want to click on that, and just drag it and draw it on the form, and it will just pop up. OK? I'm going to have pictures throughout so you can see what's going on, so it'll be a bit more helpful for you. And we're going to edit the properties of that Windsock control now. And you're going to change uh, this setting here, the protocol, to a UDP protocol. And we're going to set the remote host to 255.255.255 to 2.5. That basically means you'll be able to speak to everyone on your network rather than a specific IP address which you could do if you find out the IP address of that computer on the network. Okay, so once that's set up, we'll go back to the form here, and we're going to draw two text boxes. Okay? And basically, one's going to be a text box for the data received, and it'll show it, and the other one will be the text box that you type the message in you want to send. And we're going to just blank out the text in here so we can see what's going on. Don't worry, there'll be a pit pitch come up in a second, okay? Right, so that text deleted, and we're going to go up and going to name it uh, TXT out. Then we're going to go down and we're going to set its multi line option to true. So when it flows down through the bottom of the box, it won't just disappear, you can scroll down. And we're going to set some vertical scroll bars as well um, to vertical. Okay, scroll bar option to vertical. So now we have a little scroll bar here, so when it fills up, you'll be able to scroll it. Okay. And then we're going to set the second one to TXTN. So, oh no, sorry, the first one was TXTN, this is TXT out. It doesn't make a difference, just as long as you have those two text boxes. And I'm going to go down again, swipe out the text, you want to set its multi-line option to true, and give it some vertical scroll bars, and you're sorted on those text boxes. Now we have two text boxes that look the same, one's called TXT in, and one's called TXT out. That's all you need, those two text boxes for this so far. And now we're going to add, add a command button to the form. I just made the form a bit bigger there for you so it'll fit. And we're going to call this command button up here. And we're going to name it CMD send. Okay, and we're going to caption it ampersand send. If you put an ampersand at the beginning of a word in the caption, it'll just underline the first letter, which just looks quite neat. Okay, so two text boxes, a windsock control, and a command button, and that's all you need. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and double click on, we're going to get rid of form load. And um, now we're going to set some global variables. Okay, we're going to dim, no, it's being a capital C, uh, dim message in as string. And dim message out as string. Okay, and there you go, you can see it, the message in a string, the message out a string. The message in is the data received, the message out is the data you send. Okay, and you'll see how that makes sense in a second, but double click on that CMD send button, okay? And we're writing message out equals 
TXT out. So that's message out equals TXT out. And message out is that text box I just showed you, the bottom one. And then we're typing socket one dot send data. And then it'll ask you to assign it to a variable. And we're going to assign it to variable message out. And that's the end of that sub. Okay, so there you go. Message out equals txt out. Socket one dot send data is message out. And now we're going to double click on this windsock control, and it will come up with windsock um, error. But we want windsock data arrival. So that's windsock data arrival. And now it'll be socket one dot data arrival. Okay. So now we're going to start typing. And to begin with, I'm just going to put message box, and then we're going to put hey in that, all right? Oh, no, we're not. We're going to put data received. Sounds better. Just so we can test that data is being received to it. And now I'm going to go ahead and run it and show you. Hopefully it'll work. So that's right. Hello, world. And we click send. And absolutely nothing happens. And now I've got to find out why. Um, I suspect it will be to do with ports, since they're not changed. So if we go over and edit the win uh, socket one's properties, go find socket one, and yep, they're set to zero. Just set them to any number. Uh, um, any programs that you want to communicate across the network need to be set to the same remote port and local port, so I'm just going to set them both to one. You can set them to anything, but they may conflict with each other, so that's all the settings you should have on there. It should look like that. Okay, so now we move back to this form, and we'll play it again, and it'll work nice this time. So we go in here and we type, hello world again, and we click send, and we get a little box, just like suspected, It says data received. Okay, so it's all well and good saying data received, but we don't want to have data received, we want to see what data is being in there. Okay. So it's pretty easy. You do socket one dot get data. Sign that to a variable and that variable is gonna be message in, which is two global variables we set earlier, which are both strings. So the data that's coming in is gonna be assigned to message in and then we're gonna write txt in equals message in. So txt in, which is the top text box, will receive whatever <laughs> variable message in. And then we're going to be a little bit fancy and write txt in add message in add no txt in ampersand message in ampersand db new line, which will mean it's what's already in the text box and the message and an, and a carriage return key. So it will come up nicely on line after line. Okay. Yep, so that's txt in, ampersand message in, ampersand vb new line. If we go ahead here and run it again and we type in just some stuff, type, 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 click, come with that annoying box which you can get rid of later. Click OK and there comes the data. And you see it's got a carriage return line there again. And if you click send again, OK, and it comes up on the next line. Okay, and you could do some neat stuff like make that text box clear at the end, which will make it much nicer. Um, and you could do a set focus to it. You can do quite a lot of stuff. If you think this is just the beginning of what you can do, you could use this for a game application and it could be instead of sending data that you put in on a click of a box it sends across a position of the noughts and crosses say right I'm, I'm just editing the cmd send and i'm just going to show you, you you could put a username in there there's many ways you could do that um there's a function that can retrieve the username if you're on the computer currently and that's the inf that's the entire code for the entire thing it's only three sub two subs and then global variables and it's very easy it's not hard at all 
and I'll just like to give thanks to Pete Holtz of Bridgewater College. That's Bridgewater College, because everything I've learned, I've learned from him, and I won't be able to do this without him. So, kudos, Pete. Later, peeps. Oh, and if there's any other requests you want to give me, if anything you want to know how to do, just don't hesitate to just drop a message or drop a comment, and I'll get around to doing it eventually, just like this. So, yeah, drop me a line. Comment now. Hello.